Nick has always been a really good swimmer, and he started it with Special Olympics when he was about 12. Um, I looked into the university's master swim, and he was a good fit, so I was able to get him into that. Nick was three years old. He kind of quit talking. He seemed to be less interested in people. We took him to his pediatrician, and then we took him to a speech therapist, and the speech therapist confirmed that she felt that he had autism. When you get to school, you get to play the game. Okay. I think that Nick is pretty unique. He has limited verbal skills or language skills. Which ones do we use? Expected or unexpected? Unexpected. But intellectual capacity is pretty normal. Unexpected. Very good, Nick. Very good. So because of that, we keep pushing for him to learn new skills and new things. That's why, I mean, as a 20-year-old who's swimming with the master's swim, who's doing horseback riding, who's getting tutoring after school, who has a part-time job, those are all things that I'm not sure you would find in, some, in another person his age because they've either accomplished that or they just it's just assumed that they would not be able to accomplish that. This is a difficult time, I think, for most parents of any kid with a disability. People call it falling off the cliff because all along you've been protected sort of by, by what the school can offer for you. And then when you age out, you literally fall off the cliff. They are able to stay in the school system until they're 21, um, and then, they, then they're on their own. There's still a lot of uncertainty. Um, what we're looking right now is trying to help him build a portfolio of his experiences, recommendations, so that any future employer can see what Nick is capable of doing. I always have high hopes for Nick. I just think that he's on a different schedule than other people, and it may be much later in his life before he reaches those kind of milestones that other people are looking at right now as a typical 20-year-old.